So what exactly is a clip volume? A clip volume is a feature in MicroStation that allows us to cut out an area, isolate out in a volumetric way part of our design file. It can be used for a number of things to help visualize and see things that are above and below. Now I'm in a 3D file. We're in a section of a roadway and we have our drainage set up underneath. Right now I'm in a shaded mode, so I can't really see subsurface easily. But if I switch to a wireframe, shift, right click, I can change this to a wireframe, which does help a bit. And even if I rotate my view, I can see there is subsurface activity going on. What I'd like to do is do a section, have a section area here. So how do we do that? Well, that's where the clip volume tool comes in. Now the clip volume tool can be accessed a couple of ways. If you're in the drawing workflow up at the top, you're in the view tab, there's a group called clip and it's got all the icons I need. I'm going to click on the first icon, which is clip volume. This can also be accessed as a toolbox and that can be located here on my view border with all my view controls. I hold the left button down. I can open that up as a toolbox. If that's how you desire it, then you can take that toolbox and dock it if you want. I'll be using the ribbon to access it. So I'm going to close the toolbox on the tool settings window. We have a number of methods. The one we're going to be looking at is called section clip tools. With that selected, below are our four options. We can do a section clip by top plane. This is where you would just left click in the view and MicroStation would look at all the elements in your file, find the midpoint, and that's where the section cut would be. We also can do the same thing with a front plane, a side plane, and the one that I'm going to be demonstrating is called apply clip by section plane. This is where I draw the line. There's a checkbox below that says display clip element. We're going to leave that turned on. This will show us the clip element, which helps us to adjust the clip volume. It's probably best that you're in a top view because when you draw the line, it's relative to your view. I'm going to rotate my view to a top view. So I'm going to do a shift right click. My view controls appear because I'm in a 3D file. I get these 3D view orientations. There's top plane. I'm going to select that. This rotates my view to a top view. I'm going to select the apply clip by section plane. It's looking for me to draw a line. So I'm going to start on the left side, do a data. You can see AccuDraw appears. I'm just going to move my cursor across to the other side of the roadway and do a second data. And you'll see the clip volume appear. So I'm going to zoom out a bit and I'm going to rotate my view. Now this element right here is my clip element. It's called a section clip. It's an actual element in MicroStation. It's a transient element. It will not print out. The other lines is basically my bounding area, my clip volume definition. And right now, these blue handles, these arrows, they're not clipping. When you use this clip by line, you need to reverse them. So I press and hold the right button I get a, a menu and I choose a clip all sides. And what you see is it clips the back side. That's what I was looking for. Now these handles can also be adjusted so that you can define the clip area. So I'm going to be defining the back. So I'm just going to click on the handle. You can see as I move my cursor, I'm dynamically redefining the clip boundary. So I'm going to move it in a little bit like this, do a data. You also can do this on the sides if you want to, and I can do this on the top and the bottom. I'm going to move it in a little bit just so our area here, and if you ever lose the handles like I just did, just using element selection, click on the section clip and you'll see them again. So I'm going to move this down so we can see this kind of more in a tight area. Now the green arrow represents the actual section or cut line. So if I zoom in, if I click on the green arrow, you can see I can dynamically adjust that and I move it across. So I'm going to move my cursor down in the lower left part here and I'm going to tell it I want to section at the midpoint of that DI. So now I'm sectioning that area. So if I move my view around by rotating it, I'm essentially seeing a cross section, if you will, of my drainage and my roadway.
Now the appearance, which you see in the backside, my finished grade, this is controlled by display styles. So I'm gonna to go to my view attributes. There's an icon right up here. Control B is the shortcut if you wanna use that. On the view attributes, at the bottom, you'll see clip volume settings. That will appear only if you have a clip volume. If you don't have a clip volume, that won't appear. It is contextual. With that said, you'll see there's forward, back, cut, and outside. Two of them, forward and cut, the display is turned on. The forward, that is our finished grade. And the cut, you can see it showing up as white lines there. If I zoom in, you can see. We'll talk about how that can be changed also. But you'll notice that everything else outside or on the other side of our section is turned off. The other side of the section, that's back. If I turn that on, you'll see it displays it. If I turn that off, you can see it doesn't display it. The same is true with outside. We also now can control the way these look. Forward is just a display style that Mike Shation's applying. How we adjust that is to the right, there's a little icon with three dots, open display styles dialog. I'm gonna click on that. You're gonna see the display styles listed on the left. And because I clicked on the icon to the right of forward, it highlights forward up here. This is how we control the way this looks in the clip volume. Right now it's displaying it at its visible edges. I'm gonna change that to filled visible edges. And then you're gonna see it changes the appearance. So this is a mesh surface, so it's looking at the element color and it's showing me the triangles or the mesh lines. So I can also control an override here. So I can override the color if I want to. Right now, if I click on this, it defaults to white. I can change this to, let's say, green if I wanted to. Probably not that desirable, but you could do that. It overrides everything on that side of forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. You also have the option to override style, weight, and transparency. Now down below for our edge settings, visible edges, if I click here, you can see we can override the visible edges. This would be like for a color. If I click on that, I can then change the color so I can make them, let's say color one. You can see all the visible edges change to color one. So I'm gonna turn that off. We also have hidden edges. I'm gonna zoom in on this sectioned DI. Down here for hidden edges, if I turn this on, you're going to see the hidden edges appear. If I turn it off, they're gone. If I turn it back on, they're visible. So that can be handy too. So this is a way for you to adjust the way the display styles are set for each one of these. Now, if you do make changes, like I did make changes to forward, if you start making changes and you just wanna go back to the way it was originally, because these are coming from a DGEN library file, in this case, um, it says exists only in a DGEN library, even though it's been used, so it's part of my file, there's an icon up here. It says update from library. If I click on that, let me zoom out first and over. I'm going to tell it restore the way it was from the DGN library file. Clicking here, you can see it restores it back. So that's a way for you to adjust it back. I'm going to set this to filled visible edges. I'm going to close the display style dialog. You also had display style for cut and for back and for outside. We just changed forward in this case. So we're going to talk about some other things working with a clip volume. The clip element that you see here can be turned off a couple of different ways. So I'm gonna unselect it. So now it returns to just a clip element, section clip. On the clip group up here, there's an icon that says show hide clip volume. If I select it, it's a toggle. I left click in the view, it turns it off. I left click, it turns it on. That's one way to turn it on and off. Also, on my view attributes, it's considered a construction class. So if I turn off construction class, that will turn it off. If I turn it back on, you'll see it. Now we also have on the view attributes, clip volume. So I can turn off the clip volume. I can turn off the construction class. And now everything is back the way it was before. Now I can also just turn these back on and apply them. If you have a clip volume, don't feel like you have to delete it in order to see everything else. You can just go to your view attributes and turn that off.
we're going to go back to element selection. I'm going to select my section clip here, and we're going to see what else we can do with this. We did a section. We set this up so we had sectioned our drainage and also our finished grade. I want to rotate my view so that this section element, the cut here, is flat to my view. So to do that, I'm going to do first, I'm going to turn off forward. So I'm going to go back to my view attributes. I'm going to turn off forward. So now I'm only looking at my cut. Now, if I zoom out a little bit here, move my cursor over the section clip, press and hold the right button on it. Mike Station's context menu, it's contextually aware, comes up and it tells me this is a section element and it gives me options down here. The one I'm looking for is called a line view to clip volume. So when I click on this, it rotates my view. So now I am looking right on edge to my clip volume. So I can see I've got a, a section. So I have in a sense, a profile, if you will, going through that. I can go ahead and rotate my view back. I can go ahead and turn back on my forward and I'll be able to see that area. So this could be really helpful when you're trying to see underneath, for example, uh, a surface or other areas in your file to be able to just isolate out a small part of your design. So let's say I wanted to work on just these two DIs and I wanted to make my bounding or my clip volume smaller. So what I can do is just click on this and I can move this over. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and I'm going to move that over a little bit like that. I'm going to go ahead and grab the other side and I'm going to move that in like that. And we'll move all of these tighter in like this. And so now I'm just looking at these two. It makes it easier for me to work on this isolated area. Now there is one last thing I want to show you and that's going to be the section cut. You'll notice that when I did the section cut, it ended up going one direction. If I want to change that, I can just go to the green arrow move around that green section arrow, press and hold the right button on it. There's an option to flip the direction. So that flips it around to the other side. I can also flip it back. You can see how we can do that easily. Now this makes it easy for you to work on these elements. This also continues to work with our display set, which is something we'll talk about in the next video in the series. So if I select these elements here and let's say this element here. Oh, let's say not that element and not that pipe. And if I do shift right click, here's display set set. If I choose that, I only see those elements and the clip volume persists. And then if I wanted to see everything again, I would shift right click, display set clear, everything comes back. And if I turn off my clip volume, again, I see everything. So this can be a very helpful way for you to work and visualize in your 3D files.